Good to be back in the house for more. I'm going to sing that little book number two. You want to see him this afternoon in the world, amen? Amen. As I journey through the land, singing as I go, pointing souls to Calvary to the friends and clothes, many arrows pierced my soul.
<laughs> also, pray for Caleb. This is from Sister Charlotte. He has a fever today in April. It's not feeling well, so just remember those also. This is from Timbo. It says, please pray for my cousin Ramon. He's 18 years old and had a bad car wreck. He's and it, and it shattered his pelvis. He's now in a coma. So remember that. Also from Brother Ray, it says, pray for my brother Larry. He's sick. So remember Brother Ray's brother Larry. Also we have one here from Brother Howe. It says, pray that AT&T can get our phone turned on. It's been over six weeks since they turned off with no reason. After over 80 hours of se uh, <clears throat> excuse me, cell phone calls, we have had a number of promises it would be turned on, but as of this date and time, uh, but those dates and times have come and passed and no phone. So remember that. That's kind of hard to believe, but I'm sure it's true. So uh, whatever the situation is, and if anybody's got a brother or a cousin who works for AT&T, you need to give them a call. And we will pray. And that will be the prayer answer, whichever way it takes. So just remember that. Remember the ones on the prayer list. We won't read them because we'll we've got to go over the birthday list and everything. But just remember those. Special prayer for Jane Lou Allen. Remember her as we're praying. Also remember uh, Mom and Dad's birth, uh, Christmas uh, fund. Still remember that. If you want to donate to that, please give out to Lisa before the 19th. Also on the 19th, we'll be having a birthday party for little Esther. That would be Sister Esther Black's birthday. Also on that day, we're going to have a Christmas dinner. So it's really her birthday, but bring food for Christmas dinner. All the sisters need to bring one meat and one vegetable. Sisters on the right, which is my left, you need to bring rolls. Sisters on the left, which is my right, you need to bring a dessert. The sisters on the left is bringing rolls on my right, I mean sisters on the right on my left, if you would like to bring a dessert with your rolls, that'll be okay too. Also, brother, single brothers, bring drinks, no water, and it says, please make an effort to be here. So just remember that. I know we all have unspoken requests this evening, afternoon. Let's all go Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for letting us come out this afternoon. Lord, be with the ones that are traveling. We have many people traveling, Brother Dick, Sister Gail, the Boyd's family. Lord, there's many other ones that are traveling, Lord, Brother Richard, Marlowe's in situ uh, test and with his job, Lord, you come down and bless him there. Wherever the people are today that we know, you come down and bless them and keep them safe. Remember Dad also this afternoon that you give him the strength and that we will, will all be attentive and listen to what's being said. Lord, just bless us now. Be with us. Be with the rest of the service. We love you for you. Many blessings. Forgive us for all of our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's go over the birthday list we have for December. As I said, the birthday party for Esther, Esther Black, on the 19th will be mom dad help will be nine nine years old on the 19th and that's her birthday party that we're having it's not really a Christmas party it's her birthday brother Tom Paul Bush has a birthday this month and brother Danny Fountain Danny turns 45 He's 10 years younger than Joyce. <laughs> Kathy Gabriel's birthday is this month. I'm not saying how old she is. It's, it's a lot. Uh, brother, uh, little Cole there. Little Cole's birthday is this month. Brother Boyd Helm, Sister Anna Kennard, Julie Krantz, Asa Compton, and little Nate McFerrin. All of them have birthdays this month. Nobody has one. What's today? The 5th. No, Sister Anna Kennard just had one, but uh, Friday. But uh, just remember the ones that have the birthday. So we're gonna sing E flat. Oh, happy birthday! Oh, happy birthday!
Amen. <laughs> That's right. You all may be seated. Amen. I'm going to put you through that again. Amen. Let's turn with uh, in the Red Book uh, 136. We're gathering unto Him. Amen. That's what we're doing this afternoon to His Word. Gathering unto His Word. We are Sheltering on, I 
appreciate Brother Mark and Brother Cole come up and take up offering this afternoon. Just something a little out of different here because we have something special for you coming up. Mm -hmm. Bless us. For the way we bless them. Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless this offer, Lord. Take care of us, Lord Jesus, we know that we have nothing that you give to us. Father, we pray now that we give back to you, Father. To you, for your name, Lord. Bless the people. Give us our sin. Bob off the hook here. Yeah. Amen. You might as well get one together, bro. Amen. Let's sing uh, 311.
312. Would you be free from the burden of sin? Would you be free from the burden of sin?
We're floating down the stream of time We have not long to stay The stormy clouds of darkness Will turn to brightest day Then let us all take courage For we're not left alone The lifeboat soon is coming together the jewels all then cheer my brother cheer our trials will soon be old our loved ones we shall meet shall meet upon that golden shore we're pilgrims and we're strangers here we're seeking a city to come the life boat soon is coming together the jewels home sometimes the devil tempts me and says it's all in vain to try to live a christian life and walk in jesus name but then we hear the master say, I'll lend you a helping hand. And if you'll only trust me, I'll guide you to that land. Then cheer, my brother, cheer, our trials will soon be old. Our loved ones we shall be shall meet upon that golden shore we're pilgrims and we're strangers here we're seeking a city to come the life of soon is coming together the jewels home the life of soon is coming by eyes of faith I see as she sleeps through the waters to rescue you and me and land us safely in the port with friends we love so dear get ready cries the captain oh look she's almost here then cheer my brother cheer our trials will soon be old our loved ones we shall meet shall meet upon that golden shore we're pilgrims and we're strangers here we're seeking the city to come the life of soon Then cheer, my brother, cheer, our trials will soon be old. Our loved ones we shall meet, shall meet upon that golden shore. We're pilgrims and we're strangers here, we're seeking a city to come. The life of soon is coming to gather the jewels home. Open the eyes of my heart.
Scriptures turn to Revelation 1 where we've been at. And we'll go to Revelation 1 and we'll go to Revelation 3. <coughs> you'll enjoy Zach playing that, that guitar. That was really good. And these little fellas let them play. Have a good time. You'll really enjoy it. Yeah. And Bob singing, we appreciate it. Yeah. Just remember now, Brother Collins will be here preaching the Lord willing Wednesday. And Brother Forney will be here. Uh, preaching for the weekend so just keep those in mind we will do our best to try to be back by the weekend and uh, sometime on to that Sunday anyway so just pray for us as we travel and uh, try to hunt a little bit and have a good time in the Lord and, uh, now the Bible study in January this time is going to have to be on the second Saturday because the first Saturday is the first so we will, we'll be here on Friday night you know, so we'll that we'll have the Bible study on the second Saturday instead of the first Saturday. So remember that. Remember little Adam, uh, Aaron came in telling him about it, said he's, he's real sick. So you just keep him in your prayers and, and all having trouble breathing and all. And uh, just, just keep him in your prayers. Amen. Any other announcements? I generally forget something, but anyhow. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for this day. We thank you for an opportunity to be able to gather. And we pray that you would just lift us up in you, Lord, that we may this day in some way, in ever what form we could do it, that we would magnify you, that we would honor you, Lord. And then we know and realize that if we honor you and magnify you and we try to make you known by the things, Lord, that we say, then... We don't have to worry about it, but you'll come and you'll make known your people. And that's the desires of our heart. Be with each one. Be with little Adam there, Lord, and deliver him, Father, from this problem of the sicknesses and all, and just help him. And, Father, bless those that are not here. You know the hindering reasons. And, Lord, we just commit everything into your hand. Guide us now and keep us in Jesus' name. Amen. Revelations 1. We've read this many times, but we keep on reading it. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel to his servant John, who by record of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ, and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Now let's go to Revelations uh, 3. Everybody knows verse 14. We'll just read that and then we'll go over to verse 21 and 22. And unto the angel of the church of the Lady of Seans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sit with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. Now remember, Brother Random is covering it. That means really own. See? But, you know, even also as, even as I also overcame and am set down with my Father in his throne, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith 
unto the churches. You may be seated. The Lord had his blessing to the reading of the word. Now, we're trying to look at these things and see the book of Revelations and see how that it unfolds. And to me it unfolds, you know, like the things that, as I've said, the prophet of God covered it one day. He said, not, there's not a lot written about the church. And, and the reason there's not a lot written about the church to me now is I believe that the church must come to the place until she becomes, I want you to listen, the church will become the Word made flesh. All right. Now we'll prove a point in a minute. We'll get back to it. That doesn't discredit down through any word because the new birth is the birth of the Word. And I show you where the prophet of God said Luther had the Word made flesh in his day. In him. All right. So don't just get it that we're having to wait for over here, but the very important part is this is our end of the story. This is to you and I. We thank God for all the other things, but it's to you and I, the hour that we're living, and that's what I want to talk about now. This is Words of Prophecy number seven, but the subtitle or the next title is Word Made Flesh. Now, I want you to keep that in your mind that, you know, you say, well, we can't be that. Now, Brother Branham, I'll give it to you in a little while. He said that outside of the corporal body of Jesus Christ, that he was here just like he was. Now, you can take what you want to for it because that's, that's up to you. And it's like I was trying to prove this morning or show the point that when we were speaking about angelic beings, uh, there was an angel come to John all right. And that angel that come to John revealed to John the entire book of Revelation. Right. All right. Now, uh, that's the catch of what I'm trying to show you because here in the chapter 1, you, you've got to deal with that and we find out that that was Almighty God that we're talking about. In bride form, standing in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks like unto the Son of Man, girt about the pouts with a golden girdle so it would be in the feminist form all right and see and being that see we don't look for that to be the one that john uh fell down before in chapter one we know automatically who it is it's almighty god well then as we go along you know in throughout the the series you'll see it unfold more and more but I, my point this morning was what? Do you believe in angelic beings? <laughs> Do you believe in angels? When the prophet of God said, all born again believers have angels. Uh -huh. There was a sign to you, as we read this morning, Hebrews 1, 14, to be ministers of to bring us unto salvation. Those angels, as I said this morning, that at once guarded the tree of life to keep man away from it. The, after then, the, the, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ coming. Now those angels are trying to run us to that tree of life, which is the Word of God. All right. <clears throat> and in trying to drive us to that, they are the ones that are heirs of the salvation, they have an angel to lead them. Right. Hmm? And see, so you think, well, well, no, it's just the Holy Spirit. When we read about three times this morning where the prophet of God said that people say, well, in this day, Brother Branham, it's just the Holy Spirit. He said, that's not true. Right. He said, there are angels. He said, because Peter had one that come to him and said he already had the Holy Ghost. But an angel come and got him out of jail. Paul had an angel in the boat to tell him about. And he already had the Holy Ghost. So then 
What is the angels of God? They are those things that are things, what is it, the beings that God created because they were the first thing God created was angels. Amen. Huh? Amen. And see, we just think, oh, it's just spirits, it's just spirit. Well, see, you keep going that way. And when you do, you're just going to totally do away with God being real. Because you're just going to take him back as to being a spirit. Yeah, right. No, he's a being. Amen. Those angels are real. They are beings. Right. They're not just a cloud floating around or a good warm feeling. You know. And I gave it to you to end that the prophet said our reason for the fact that we don't see the angels of God he said, God gave you an inward birth. And from that, you're supposed to follow God. The outward birth, we follow the natural. But in the inward birth, the, then we're supposed to make contact with the supernatural God. And why can't we believe for angels come and appear to us? Right. Amen. Yeah. Well, see, that's, that's where we mess up and don't believe it. Amen. Yeah. But then it's not to just say, oh, I, I've got an angel, I just feel him. No. I believe him. I believe he's there. <laughs> because he's, he's to be with those that would have salvation. To take care of us. Right. Now, in that then, whether it be a messenger of earth, a natural angel that we covered, whether it be a investigating angel right. with flying saucers that the prophet talked about, yeah. whether it be heavenly beings, why can't we believe they're real? Right. Yeah. Well, I just can't see how they're real. Well, why? Well, I can't see them. Right. Well, you've never seen Jesus, so that means you ain't saved. That's what you're doing. You don't realize it. You're placing God so far away from you right. until He can't come to you. That's right. Why can't you believe angels are more real than you are? Right. Well, that's just where it is. I just believe they're just this kind of a spirit like. Well, see, then you're going to make God that. Because whatever the angels are, remember, they rotated off of God. Right. Now, that's what your prophet said. Right. So why can't we believe? Right. Now, let's don't be silly, you know, and say, wait, now you're sitting on my angel. Oh, that's what? Uh, uh, Anna, <clears throat> Anna and uh, Julie used to have their buddies, and they didn't want you to sit down in a certain place because their buddy was sitting there. <laughs> But they did have a good imagination. See, it's not like that, folks. This is real. Salvation is real. It is not just a, well, I feel like I'm saved. But tomorrow I won't feel too good, so I'll wonder where I am or not. God is real. The angels are real. We are the reason that they don't contact us. We are the reasons. Because we get other things in the way. Okay, I gave it to you this morning. But the, they're ministering spirits to guide us to God. No matter as I was saying, whether it be an earthly messenger, like Brother Branham, church age messengers, preachers, whatever, they're to guide us to God. Right. Huh? And then doing that, see, we can come out to be being the heirs of salvation. They're actually ministering righteousness to us. Salvation. Peace. You know. Like Brother Random, wouldn't it be something for you to talk to an angel and an angel said, Don't you have no fear? Don't be afraid of nothing. I'll be with you. Now, which oh that was just for Brother Branham. Now you're limiting yourself. Right. Amen. 
So that's the reason God can't contact you. I believe He's here for all of us. Amen. Brother Brown's angel won't help me. But now here's the point I wanted to make sure we got. Even though Brother Brown had an angel to come to him at birth, you know, there and followed him all his life, that angel didn't save him. That angel could only lead him to God. That, on, that angel could only say, don't drink, don't smoke, don't chew. There'll be a work for you to do. Right. Yeah. Now that's, you know. You see, those angels rotating off of God, would they not be a part of God? Amen. Yeah. You know, why can't we believe it? All right. But see, we just say, well, it was just the Holy Ghost. Yeah. See, then we're limiting ourselves right. and destroying all of the things and then we'll automatically look to Brother Brown and have an angel. Yeah. Right. Well, now, Miss Plain and Blunt, if he had one and the prophet of God said, I ought to redeem our angels, then we're the ones limiting it. God's done what He said He'd do. Believe it. All right. See, they are sent from God. They are under control directly of the Holy Spirit. And then by being in control of the Holy Spirit, sent of God, that angel couldn't tell Brother Brown something contrary to the Word. But you know what I love about it? We were talking about it yesterday. See, when that angel would come and tell Brother Brown something, he proved he was a child of God. You know how? He spent the rest of the day checking the Scriptures. Right? He spent the rest of the day checking the Scriptures to see if what the angel said was right. Right. There's a true child of God. Amen. All right. Now let's get on to something that I've mentioned many times and I want to keep mentioning it. That even though a messenger, even though we could call him a prophet, even though we would talk about an angel, even Jesus come to the disciples and led them for three and a half years. But you know he couldn't reveal anything to them. It takes the Holy Spirit to reveal it. They can bring us to the channel. They can lead us and guide us. But they can't save us. It takes the Holy Spirit to do that. Now, after now we read in Genesis 1 the revelation that God gave to Jesus to give to John and sent and signified by his angel okay now after that angel come to John to tell John of the book of Revelations don't forget that Jesus Christ stepped on the scene to John Now you understand what I mean. That though an angel, a prophet, or anybody tell you something, if God don't step on the scene to reveal that, what have you got? Well, Brother Dale, you mean you believe that, that Jesus Christ? Well, I'll find it somewhere in here. I'll find it in a minute. It don't make no difference. God has to reveal it. Or we don't get it. That's the whole thing. Now, what happened at Patmos? Now, follow me. God gave to Jesus a revelation of Jesus, right? And he 
gave it to an angel to bring it down to you and I. In other words, to record it. And he come to John. All right. But now get the point. Keep it in your mind. See, then Jesus stepped on the scene to John. He doesn't just leave it in an angel's hands. He comes to make it known to John. Right. Has that happened in our lives? Right. Has Brother Branham been able to bring the Word to you and I enough that Jesus Christ could step out of that Word right. to you and I? And become something personal to us. Right. Yeah. I, I thought that's what he's supposed to do. Yeah. Now, what did John see? I'm talking about John on Patmos now. He saw the Word made flesh. He said, now wait just a minute now. John the Baptist is the one who saw that. I agree with you, John the Baptist saw that. Right. But what if I could show you that Jesus Christ became so real that he's the Word made flesh? In your flesh. Right. Amen. Okay? Right. Now let's see if we can follow that. Because when John saw what he saw. Automatically, chapter 2 and 3, which is the seven church ages, that's red letter edition in your Bible, which means that that's what Jesus said. So the proof was, the angel could deliver the thought, but he can't reveal the thought. He can't make it manifest. Hmm? That's where people miss it on the adoptional series and things, you know. And Brother Brown talk about manifestation of the sons and daughters of God. And all I've ever heard preach out of that, outside of just a few that's around with us pretty close, all I've ever heard preach out of that is, look at Brother Brown, he can make the word manifest. Jesus can make the word manifest. That's all we need is for them and not for us. They don't even look up the word manifest. The word manifest is to make known. The angel made known to John what John needed. And then when he made it known, God stepped on the scene to vindicate it. Has he done that to me and you? And see, we've got to Make him known. But see, everybody, well, I want to be made known. All right, you show your great big stuff, sure. And you show you're not right in the gospel. Because right. this is not to make you and I known. Right. It is to make him known. Right. But don't worry about it. You make him known. He'll right. make you known. Right. I've never been worried about it. He's always took care of it. Right. But if I try to make myself known, what do I get? But if I'll make him known, look up the word manifest. See, manifest his sons of God. Brother Ren said that uh, outside of this day, where was it to be manifested sons? Well, I just don't see it in you, Brother Dale. Well, what are you looking for? Well, I want to see you raise the dead, heal the sick. Well, you got all afternoon. You want to talk about what God has done? If you got the goods, you don't have to worry about it, do you? I've seen everything but blinded eyes open. I used to say I've seen everything but the dead raised, but we got an opportunity. And God raised a man from the dead. His eyes would roll back. And what could we do? Why did I do it? Wade can tell you. He said, Daddy, we got to do something. This man's dying. All I 
done was one thing. His name is Randall. And I said, Randall! And his eyes up, looked around. I believe God raised him from the dead. You say, well, what was it doing? I know that there was something different about that sound. And why would I do it that way? See, you can say, well, that makes, no, 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 that this makes Jesus Christ. That's all it makes. Don't make nothing out of me and you. No way. It makes Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came to John after John delivered the message. Now listen, I, I don't know how to get this together right here, so please listen and try to help me. The revelation come to Jesus to give the, to the angel to give to John, right? But now, when you're getting it, look what it's actually doing. The revelation come to give Jesus to give to the angel to give to John, but then immediately Jesus steps on the scene. They don't talk about the angel in chapter 2 and 3. Now come on, we ain't got there. It don't talk about the angel of God in chapter 4 either. Because you better believe one thing for certain. It's not in red letter, but John heard a voice in heaven say, come up. The angel could only write that down. He could only help John keep it together and let him write it. He couldn't call the dead. Right. <coughs> so are we putting more emphasis upon the angel or are we putting more emphasis upon Jesus Christ? See, Jesus was the Word. Do you agree? Amen. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. In verse 14 said, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And you agree that He was the birth of the Word. Amen. The birth of what those prophets built, His body. He was that in manifestation. Amen. Now, Who would know more about what to do then to bring that word once again into flesh? Hmm. Now I'm going to make my statement and then you listen. Hmm. That's the reason chapter 2 and 3 is in red letter because Jesus is showing you that it's him in the church. Right. It's not the church, the bride. You know. It's him and the bride. He's showing you his position because that was what was to be made known. He didn't know his place in the kingdom, right? right. Amen. Come on, your prophet said he didn't know. Page 11, 12, 13, right in there of the church age book. He didn't know his part in the kingdom, but said that when he come to John on Patmos, he didn't know. He knew exactly what the ages was going to be, and he knew his part in the ages. Right. Amen. Uh -huh. Now, Let's read something. Look at number one on your notes. I quoted this the other night, and I figured people, you know, would doubt the total of what I was re uh, quoting. So I decided maybe we'd read it. And it's looking unto Jesus, preached in Phoenix, Arizona, 1964, zero one. To, to John, the greatest of all prophets, he was the one that introduced Jesus. Jesus said he was greater than any man had been born. Now listen. Did you ever think why that was? Now are you reading what Brother Brown said? 
Did you ever think why that was? Did you ever think why it was that John was the greatest of all the prophets? He was the messenger of the covenant. Jesus Christ is the angel of the covenant, but John is the messenger of the covenant. He stood between law and grace to introduce Jesus Christ. But what's your prophet? John, the greatest of all prophets, he was the one that introduced Jesus. Jesus said he was greater than any man had been born. Did you ever think why that was? Now watch me last for you. All the rest of them spoke of him. You know, all the prophets in there. The word of the Lord comes to the prophet. That's the Bible said so. And all and in all the other prophets it come to them in visions. But when the word came to John, it was flesh. Jesus was the word. He is the word. He always was the word. But here is where the fullness of God was made flesh and dwelt among us. When he come to him in the water, he was a prophet. And if the word is made flesh, it's got to come to the prophet. The word, wherever it is, it must come to a prophet. Because a prophet is the one the word comes to. And John was the prophet of the day. Now you see why John is the greatest of all the prophets. When I found out when I had a little shouting, He's the greatest of all the prophets. Amen. Why? All the other prophets, it would say in the scripture, if you'll read it, that the word of the Lord came in a vision. You know, it says the Old Testament prophets. Or the word of the Lord was precious in the people of the day. It would say those things because why? Because the word came. Even though Melchizedek, met Abraham even though Moses would see the great things that he saw but still John is greater and you know that John never done one miracle well that ought to do away with our thoughts about well it's got to be got to be miracles John the greatest of all never done one miracle But he saw the word that was made flesh. The greatest honor could ever be was to walk out in that water that day, a man that John could turn and look and say, from nine years old when I went into the wilderness until this day, I waited. But I was told what I must do. John, what are you supposed to do? I'm the one, I'm the voice or the one crying in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way. Isaiah 40, right in there, 42, whatever it is. John saw the word made flesh. What a wonderful thing to think about. No. Can you not realize then that when John was there on Patmos, now that was John the Baptist that saw that, okay? Everybody understand? Now John, the writer, and one of the apostles, when he comes to Patmos, what does he say? Well, he just saw a vision. Of, no, you didn't get what I was laying down there a moment ago. The angel could bring it to John. But the angel couldn't write down right. what was put in 20, uh, verse chapter 2 and 3. An angel couldn't do that. Jesus came on the scene. 
John is seeing in the church ages the Word made flesh. Right. Now we should go home, you that have computers, and just run in Word made flesh. Or Word flesh, you know. And just read all the things. We would be here until past 12 o'clock. I got a bunch laying on my desk about the word flesh. See, if you have the new birth, an ever born again believer had the new birth. Right? And that was the birth of the word. Because that's your new birth, it's the birth of the word. And we were talking about in the Bible study last night. And the baptism of the Holy Ghost. What is it? The birth of the Word. That's why Nicodemus couldn't comprehend. He said, you must be born again. Like what he was saying. He didn't say to Nicodemus, now Nicodemus, you've got to be anointed. You've got to shout. You've got to do this. No, he said, you must be born again. Amen. Ever born again believer for the day they were living was the Word made flesh. Right. Now, let's see if you can swallow. Ever prophet that ever brought the Word to any age, right. he was that Word made flesh. That's why they couldn't comprehend him. That's, right. That's why Isaiah could say a virgin shall conceive and he just couldn't understand. Right. That's why Moses could write five books and tell you what happened in Genesis. You know that it's so close until Moses was God to the people. Right. That's what the Bible says. What your prophet says. For the hour he was living, right. the Word was made flesh he spoke it out of his lips and automatically sealed it up. Because right. there was nobody there could comprehend what he was saying. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's what people don't understand. They think when Brother Brown spoke it, that, that really opened it up. No, when Brother Brown spoke it, that sealed it. Right. Right. It takes the Holy Spirit to reveal it. I can talk all day long. Won't do you no good. But one word from God will give you the word. Make flesh. You understand then what John saw on Patmos? He saw Jesus Christ in the church down through seven ages. And they were the Word made flesh for the hour that they were living. Just as those prophets were the Word made flesh for the day they were living. Then John comes and he introduces the Word. No? Did not Brother Brown say that this prophet in the end time would be pointing to a word born bride. That's what God thinks of you and I. He didn't write as we mentally think in our minds. We think, well, God was doing pretty good in the early church. Second, third, maybe fourth church age. But then the fifth, the sixth, and seventh, it's just, oh, just so small. You better read your Bible. It's odd how the Bible is written. It doesn't say that he was standing in the last age. Read your Bible. One in the midst, Revelation 1 by 13. One in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Mist means middle. So if you're going to take your carnality 
of saying that only the first church age, when you read Alpha and Omega, the only the first church age had him and the last church age had him and the rest of them didn't have nothing. They had enough to get in the body of Christ. Right. See, then I'll quote you the scripture and your prophet where he said he stood in the midst. Midst means middle. So if you're going to be carnal, so will I. If you're going to say he was only in the first and the last age, I'm going to say that your prophet in the Bible said that he was in the middle age greater than anything because he was in the midst, in the middle. I can be just as carnal as you can. But see, carnality is not a revelation. It simply means that he's God of every age. Now, if he's Hebrews 13, 8, we may change, but God don't change. When it comes to the age of Martin Luther, God was just as happy to be there in that message of the just shall live by faith Amen. as he is to be here today. <coughs> Why can't we believe it that way? See, the word for each age was Jesus Christ. Just as the word of each prophet was Jesus Christ, right? So the word of each age is Jesus Christ. The Alpha and Omega is dealing with the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. The ministry. Not the birth. It's dealing with the ministry. Did he have his ministry back there? And he'll have his ministry down here. Hmm? So when we're reading these quotes, don't get all tied up with it. Just read it for what he's saying. <coughs> Look at him on Masterpiece. He's all others never appeared again. Now he's talking about the vision he saw of the bride. And how these others that come down with naked and things, they went off and was destroyed. They went out never to come back again. But the bride came back because she's Alpha and Omega. God the great sculpture has made him a masterpiece. So the masterpiece and the Son of God, the masterpiece and the bride, and it's a piece of him which must be the fulfilling of the word. The word has been fulfilled and we're ready for the coming of the Lord. Alpha and Omega. What he was in the first church age, he wants to be in the last. But now you better cover another point of Alpha and Omega whether you ever thought of it or not. But as I said, Alpha and Omega dealing with ministry, you better deal with the ministry of Jesus Christ that he had while he was here on earth. Because Brother Branham come to bring back, yeah, the faith of the fathers, but the faith of the fathers didn't bring the resurrection sign. Brother Randall had the resurrection sign, whether you believe it or not. Because he had the sign of the Son of Man. Right. That's the resurrection sign. Right. But you see, Brother Randall didn't just, it, it looks like he's only placing it back in the first church age. He's got to go back to there. Because that's true. But the ministry of Jesus Christ, when he's here on earth, he's got to repeat here upon earth again. We can look at it and talk about Brother Branham, but we better consider who we are. Because I hope you're following me. Chapter 2, chapter 3 is the Word made flesh. I'm trying to prove to you that by Jesus coming to John, it shows that the bride would be the Word made flesh. Just like John saw the Word made flesh. All right, let's see. Where did that? It's number 17 of your notes, which is the message E40, Escape, Come Hither. It'll be the last marking on your notes, 1958, 222. He said outside of the corporal body of Jesus Christ. It's not 17, but I'll have to find it. Okay. Maybe I left it laying in the office. Oh, it's just, here it is. Okay, I didn't give you this one, I'm sorry. Uh, 
You can have it when I get through. Now here's the message. I thought I put it in there to Joe, but anyway. The message, escape, come hither quickly, 1958, 222. Paragraph E40. And if you see that the judgment of God is so close at hand, and remember at the judgment bar when I stand before you, and you see that these things that I have said, you don't have to wait till then. Are you listening to it? Hour by hour, night by night, Jesus appears here in ever form that he did outside of his corporal body when he walked on the earth. He reveals the secrets of the heart. He come down the other night before five, he only put it on him. Now listen, let's keep reading. He come down the other night before 500 people right here, just exactly the way it did on the day of Pentecost. Now, how many knows what happened on the day of Pentecost? A mighty rushing wind. Brother Brown was standing there. They saw his coat actually moving. The mighty rushing wind come through. This is when it was happening. That he's telling him about it. When a roar started from the skies and everybody started looking, here it come like a great thunder struck up here on the platform and roared out over the building. Not a wind blowing, but like a rushing wind. What did we do? What did we do? Instead of our hearts being a fire to set around the town, you know what he said? Go on out. We said, it was pretty good. Yeah. No doubt in my mind about it. The rise and trim your lamps. He said, you got too much oil mixed up with your spirit or too much water. You'll make carbon. Right. That was when the Holy Spirit came down and come across the building. And Brother Ryan said, it's like a rushing wind. He said, outside the corporal body, he's here. Amen. Why can't we believe that? Amen. Yeah. Why can't we believe just these little simple things? Look at number two, three on your notes. The true bride. This is spoken words, original seed, page 82, 1962, 318e. The true bride, like Mary, will have a virgin wound for the bride of the word, which is Christ. When Christ the word comes to the bride, she'll be the same as he is. A virgin by the word. I hope, I hope it's going over. Brother Neville, I see, see, I hope you understand. What was he? Word. The word of God. Upon his vesture he had a name written, the word of God. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And the word made flesh and dwelt among us. He is God, and God is the word. And when his bride comes, she'll be the same product that he is virgin continue to read did Christ belong to a denomination did Jehovah neither does his bride she's part of him she needs no dogma she won't have any she'll be absolutely virgin how by the word amen she'll punctuate every word God says with an amen amen oh be it unto me according to thy word Oh my, there you are, punctuate God's word. Have a virgin womb. What will she come out of? A virgin womb, the word. What did Jesus come out of? A virgin womb. He goes to tell you that when Adam come to his wife, she was pregnant with death. But when, when God came to Mary, she was pregnant with life. But when Joseph the human come to his wife, glory can't hardly hold her. She was pregnant with life, the word of God, God flesh. Come on. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? 
John on Patmos was shown the same thing that John the Baptist saw on the River Jordan. The Word made flesh. The only difference is who the who it's in. When it was here on earth, it was in one man. Now it's in the bride. Man, I just don't see that. If we had it, boy, we'd have more. You're what's wrong with it when you say that. Right. When you say, if we had it, you are the one that's doubting. Right. Amen. Sorry. Hmm? Why not thank God for every little thing we got? Right. Instead of belly aching and griping about what we don't have. What like were our lives fit in his life? Right. Tormented all of his life by devils and yeah. beaten and stoned and all kinds of things. And yet we well, I got a little problem. You just don't understand, Brother Dale. We were talking about it yesterday. I thought we were supposed to come to church when you're sick. Now come on, because of the rest of the people that's in here, somebody comes in here with a temperature, we'll put you back there in the nursery. You can sit in there. And then we'll pray for you. I said because of the rest that's in here. Do you tell me, Brother Dale, you don't need to go visit these people that are sick. You get sick. I'm not going to get sick. Never seen it yet. <laughs> Say, don't challenge that one, okay? I walk into a room with people. I'm going to ask, what do you think's wrong with you? Well, I got some. I'm going to stay over here. Brother Moke said he prayed for a man one night, and it was kind of dirty. You know, the guy was kind of dirty. Okay. And they went to pray for him and said, when they got ready to pray, he said, they always reaching over. And he said, he seen one man reaching way over. And he put one finger on the guy's head. I guess he's going to trust one finger. <laughs> what are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? They told Brother Reynolds, said, you can't go in there where your babies are at. You will get that disease. Well, was he afraid of it? Right. That's the problem. You're afraid. Yeah. And being afraid, you bring on the sickness. Right. Yep. Well, Brother Dale, I went with, with a man, and I'm, I'm not saying nothing against it. We went to the church one night, and I prayed for a whole bunch of people that were sick, and we were fixing to go eat, and got in a brother's car, and we called his name or nothing, but got in his car, and we started down the road. He said, here, Brother Dale, and he handed me a bottle over there. I mean, this had done been 45 minutes. If I was going to get anything, I'd have done got it. But he said, here, wash your hands with this, this you know, older, I don't know what you call it, uh, to kill all the bacteria. He said, wash your hands with this before you go eat. I didn't make no big scene. I tell you, just wash my hands when I don't forget it. You go up to the hospital, everybody goes through. They go in and they come back out and toot, toot, little things, you know. And the hospital is costing them thousands of dollars for the little toot toot bottles that they have to everybody pop on. When the hospital is full of germs floating in, why don't you get you a mask and put it on? Or better still, why don't you get you one of these spaceship helmets, whole suit, and walk in to pray for somebody? You say, well, you will not be that silly. I agree with you. They will not even have to be mentioned. Right. Right. Yep. Why are we afraid? Right. You're afraid because you don't know where you're at. Right. I trust him. Right. I don't trust some toothpick bottle in the hospital. 
So germ killer. I trust God. Mm -hmm. yeah, we'll charge you for that one. <laughs> Look what he said on number four of your notes. Still all spoken words reading the seed, which is page 83. <coughs> Bring back that spoken word. Bring back that word of God, which was the word here, come through a human's womb. Amen. God will do it anyhow. Where's it going to come through now? The human wound of the bride. Is that not what we just read about? Or the spoken word? It is to come through the wound. The wound of the word. It would be good to read Restoration of the Bride Tree and, and spoken words of original seed because look at Restoration of the Bride Tree. Page 62. Now watch, he was God's perfect prophet tree. The example tree, the bridegroom tree. Amen, glory. I'm going to say something directly. If he is the bridegroom tree, you believe it? From the Garden of Eden. Then the bridegroom tree without the female don't bear fruit. So he's got to have a bride tree. She's got to be born of the same material. The Word made flesh from the tree. I hope you get it. The same life in this female tree, the bride tree, groom, as it is in the bride. The works in the do you do all. Is that right? You say that ain't scriptural. Read. In other words, you say that ain't scriptural. What? That he's got to have a female tree. He's got to have a bridegroom. And the bridegroom's got to have a bride. You say that ain't scriptural. Oh, it is. I caught that now. See, we're going to have a, going, we're fixing to have a healing meeting in a minute. I caught that. He was, you want proof of it? He said, I am the vine, ye are the branches. Where does the fruit bear at? Amen. No bear on the vine, the bear's on the branches. I am the vine, you are the branches. You bear the fruit. And the male tree and the female tree produces the pollen one to the other that brings the fruit. And the branch and the vine does the same thing. He made the choice to join himself to you and I. So he's got to be responsible. It's like I told him last night in the, in the Bible study. I said, now there, if choice told me something, I can depend on that. And you know, I might not claim that for a long time, but I still believe she'd do what she said. But one day I could walk up to her and say, Joyce, you remember what you promised me? I said, I believe she'd do it. Because I know her that well. Well, why can't we believe God? Amen. I want God obligated to me. Amen. Oh, now boy, you really went wrong. <laughs> hey, we are obligated to Him for everything we have. Breathe in the air you breathe. Don't get garbage up in what I'm saying. Why do I do like I do? You want me to just tell you? Why do I pick up most of the meal tickets? Why do I buy a lot of things for a lot of people? You know why? I want you obligated to me. <coughs> I may wind up one of these days don't have no money. I may have to say, Danny, I can't pay for it this time. Can you pay for the meal? <laughs> I know he would. <coughs> but see, because you know why? Because I paid for a lot of them. I'd rather have you obligated to me than me obligated to you. Now, God is obligated to me and you because 
of what he said. That's the only obligation he's got to you and I. He said, if you can believe it, Brother Brown said, if you can find it in the Bible, you can call God on the scene, and if he don't do it, you can call him a liar. Now, that's a direct quote from your prophet. Now, that's not haphazardly. I'll just, there, Lord, do that. Be serious. I never got serious with God that I didn't see him fulfilled. He said, well, we need a lot of things, I too, but I try not to be that serious about a lot of things. I try to be serious about this word first. Because this is our own opportunity. He said, you said that in scripture. He said, I, I caught you. You know that Brother Brown said, God is not complete without you? Or may I quote it? Maybe it says, he said, the God is not complete without you. Maybe that's the word. But look what he done. You look down through the ages and you see the all mess up and you see the people, you see Luther and them with the Trinitarian doctrine, you see all of the things taking place, smoking a pipe, sitting in a beer, you know, or sitting in a pub drinking beer, talking about the Bible. But he had to do birth. Well, I don't see I can have it there and I can't do it now. Well, why do you want to do it? I mean, are you wanting to drink and smoke? No, no, I just don't understand how come I have to be different. Because you're in another age. And the requirement of this age requires somebody to buy the bunt. Okay, we'll get on. No. I'm going to have to cut this off and do it later, I guess. But listen, I want to make sure you get these things and then we'll, we'll get on to the other. So read fast with me, all right? Number six, Feast of the Trumpets, 64, 719. And now, how he said it'll appear in the last days to bring the people back to the Word. So that the bride will know her husband, know her mate, the revealed Word. What is your mate? The revealed Word. That's why this has to happen. It wasn't in the Reformers. wasn't in Luther, Wesley, and the Pentecostals and them. The Scripture said it wasn't. But it will come... That is his promise for this age. Right. Now, we're living the age that his coming will be. She must be identified in him. Any woman must be identified with her husband for the two or one. And Christ's bride has to be identified with him for the two or one. And he is the word, not the denomination the word. We are to be the children of the light, of the light. And the light is the word made, which is made light for this age. How do we know light except it comes from the Word? All right. The Word made flesh is the light of the age when you see it. The Bible said so. Identified masterpiece. You read all the rest of these. Because if you don't read them, you don't care about it anyway. I'm sorry. But see, we have to be the Word made flesh in this age. That was what was revealed to John on Patmos. That the Word would be flesh. Alright, down through the ages it wasn't uh, in its fullness. But here in the end time we're to come back to the same ministry that the Lord Jesus Christ had. We're to come back to be the Word made flesh. Yes. So it's according to how we yield ourselves unto Him. We must be the Word made flesh. Because that's what John saw in chapter 2 and 3. Because remember chapter 4 was the rapture. He saw an open door and a voice that said, Come up! There's not much written about the church. But the thing of it is, she's the Word made flesh. And how did it wind up? To prove the point? Revelation 3, 21. To him that overcometh, I will grant to sit with me in my throne. Now that's not the Father's throne. That's his throne. Listen. 
even as I also overcame and am set down with my Father in His throne. As He and God was one, He and the bride must be one. The Word made flesh. What did John see? The Word made flesh. What did the angel bring to John? The Word. But Jesus come to make it live. The angel come to John to, to deliver the Word, yes. But Jesus come to make it live. The prophet of God brought the message to you and I. But the Holy Spirit has to come to make it live. We must be the Word made flesh. In our flesh. Right. Well, I just don't see it. See ours. What are you looking for? Right. Well, what I want to see, and I want to see somebody stand up there and, and just call out like Brother Branham called it out. That was never promised to be but to one man. Right. So you take your unbelief and whittle away all you want to. But it won't stop God. He's done showed in chapter 2 and 3 that there would be a bride. That would be the Word made flesh. That's what he revealed. He said, we'll prove that, okay? Chapter 4 and verse 1. Rapture takes place. That's pretty good proof. But you see, we want to take our unbelief and our carnality and say, I just don't see it. Well, all right. Evidently, you don't, if that's the way you think. But do you mean nobody don't have it just because you don't have it? Now, that ought to be something for us to think about. I, I just don't believe in them fellas going to outer space. I just don't believe in that. Well now, who are you for to decide this on? I believe the Word is made flesh. Well, we sure are pitiful. I'll agree. But it's because of ourselves. We are the ones who let the devil get on us. And your prophet of God said, we read this morning, what keeps God, the angels of God from coming to us? We've got too many things in between us and Him. Well, we are the one doing it, and then we blame God. Then we get down and pray and we say, but Lord, why wouldn't you do this? If we had Brother Branham here now, he could tell us why. If we had Brother Branham here today, now he could tell us why. As I said this morning, or was it when I started, Brother Colley, if you don't know what your problems are, that's the biggest problem you've got. Right. Right. You are your problem. Right. Right. That's your biggest problem if you don't know your problems. Right. You know why? Because you're hiding. Right. Right. You're trying to deceive everybody else. Right. You're being a hypocrite. Right. Right. Instead of just being straight. Right. Being honest. Because it's a whole lot better to just say, I know what my problem is, but I ain't going to do nothing about it. That's better than saying, I don't know what my problem is. Brother Dale, I wish you'd tell me my problems. No. You don't want to know your problem. 
Because when you know your problems, you've got to do something about it. Does anybody in here want to argue that point? We'll do away with the communion and spend the rest of the evening. <laughs> your problem is you. And then you want God to override. No. He won't override. And you won't see what other people see. Because you won't follow the rules of the book. You want me to call out and tell you what's wrong with you. Stand up, Sister Johnny. Stand up. Yep, stand up. Sister Johnny, now what's your problem is? You, sit down. See, what you want me to do is go through your life and tell you what you've done this week. Mm -hmm. See, that wasn't what Brother Branham, he said, one of these days, I'll show you this was not right. Is that the statements he made? It was never to have been used to reveal the secrets of the heart. The secrets of the heart never converted anybody. He said, all these do is just bring you the presence to you to recognize the presence of God is here. In other words, if I tell Sister Johnny something that she was thinking, something she'd done this morning, she'd say, well, God's got to be with the man. That ain't going to save her. He said, this gift ain't going to save nobody. He said, I'll show you sometimes it wasn't right. The preaching of the gospel is what it is. See, because the preaching of the gospel will make the word flesh. You want to know what's wrong with you? Go look in the mirror. And then just say, now, Lord, I see my problem. My problem's me. See, that's why Brother Dale don't preach like other preachers. Because you see, that makes it harder than to just tell you, now, Joyce, what you need to do. I saw you dress this the other day. They was up just a little bit too far, you know, a little bit this way, a little bit that way. Do this, do that, the other. She's got a mirror. Come on, sisters, you stand in front of a mirror and your knees are showing. Do I have to come along and tell you your knees are showing? Come on. And we say we're the Word made flesh. We're talking about the Word made flesh and we want to talk about other things. Back on these things. You say, well, you could say a lot about this, that, or the other. Sure can. But if you don't know your problems, yeah. it wouldn't do me no good to tell you. I mean, now wait, say, you know, things out slipping around a little bit and smoking a little pot. And he comes to me and he said, Daddy, tell me my troubles. I said, go look in the mirror. See? He's wanting me to tell him other things, how sweet it is and how nice he is. He ain't wanting me to tell him what it is. You don't want me to tell you your problems. Because you'd have to agree that it's right. Let's straighten up ourselves. Read the book. And see what the book says. Yeah, yeah but I, I, Brother Dale, I want your word on what's right and wrong. See? 
now you're trying to get me to be your crutch. Right? I'm not going to be your crutch. Mm -mm. No. I'm going to be your preacher. We don't have to worry about crutches. Let's stand together. Let's go into the communion. First Corinthians eleven twenty three. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament. In my blood this do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do shew the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that you come not together unto condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. So let's just take a moment and just think about it. You know your troubles. For me to tell you won't make you change. <coughs> a lot of divorces are coming and things because people won't look at the signs of their own life sometimes. We know ourselves. I know my problems better than you do. What bothers me wouldn't bother you at all. But what bothers you wouldn't bother me maybe at all. Because we're different human mortals. You see, we have no excuse. We stand openly before God because that's one thing that Hebrews 4 and 12 says the word is sharper than a two-edged sword. If the preaching of the gospel will not bring light to your eyes of the sins of your life then for me to tell you won't change you as i was trying to bring out this morning of the angel of god you think about your angel he's a direct connection to the holy spirit there's cherubim there's seraphims to keep the worshiper clean direct connection and we, we would want to hinder them. Remember, we don't get by with anything. All things are made known in this day. You may hide it from me, but you won't hide it from God. I may hide from you, but I can't hide from God. Think on these things. Think about the communion. It's supposed to be the overcomer. Are we overcomers? It's supposed to be, be for those that have wrestled it out and, and it comes forth. Are we overcomers? Think on these things. Father, we thank you that you have given us your word and that your word is true now that we come to this time of the communion help us to realize realization and father we love you and we thank you and it says that they take a few moments and have just a moment of silent prayer 
pray one for the other. You pray especially for me. Let's do this just for a few moments and just think about our lives and ourselves and our doings. Because we're not hiding from nobody. Let's just silently pray before God. Just bless each one of us, Lord, as we go into this part of the service and just have your way. Forgive our sins and cleanse us, make us worthy to be able to partake of this that's just an example. But one day a reality will be more real than ever in our lives when we see you. We love you and we thank you. And just be with each one. The Bible said he took bread and he blessed it. <coughs> Father, we thank you for this bread that's been made for this purpose this afternoon. We pray that you would just sanctify the bread and the partakers, that we may be one together in you. We know that this bread is representative of the word, and we believe your word. So help us to, as we eat this bread, that we think about you, that this is your body that was given for us because you was the word made flesh. And we are the word made flesh when we let the Spirit of God go through our beings. We love you and we thank you. Sanctify the bread and the partakers in Jesus' name. I always think about the children of Israel when they were fixing to leave out of Egypt. A very sacred time to them. A very sincere time. It was a very sincere time in the upper room when the Lord Jesus instituted the communion and he was fixing to die. His last act was to try to steal them. That this was the fulfilling of the word. This is what all of those days and feasts and times was all about. Lord, you took the wine and you blessed it and you said, take, drink. This is my body, I mean my, my spirit that was given to you for where that we could take it and drink it and let it be a quickening upon that word that we have ate today. So let your Holy Spirit be with each one of us. This is not your blood. It's just, it's just wine that was made for a purpose. But it'll stimulate that bread that we do eat and it'll become blood vessels in our body and Lord how much greater is the revealed word help us to realize who you are and what you have made us you've made us the word made flesh again upon the earth we love you and we thank you in Jesus name come morning I walk by the river I'll rest me the ever rain tree I'll carry my cross through the midnight come morning there's glory for me sometimes I'm despised and rejected and I question oh father how long then I take one more look at Mount Calvary and it gives me the strength to go on Come morning and I'll walk by the river. <coughs> Rest me the ever green tree. I'll carry my cross through the Come morning there's glory. 
church, when we get over there, the things are going to be a lot different. We're going to see reality as reality. Sure, we have the human problems here of life. We look for things and have our mind set on a certain thing that has maybe got to be before a rapture can come. But, you know, I wonder what the disciples had their mind set on. It certainly must not have been the way that it took place because it didn't do them much good, did it? But they must have had it figured out wrong. They didn't realize that Jesus was going to have to die. It never dawned on them that that would be what would have to take place. They thought maybe he was going to take over the world. And even after his death and his resurrection, they still thought he was going to restore the natural kingdom to Israel. They still didn't know what he's talking about. But see, church, do we have a reality? Let's all protect together. You can be seated for a moment while we're getting ready to have the foot washing if you'd like to turn over into John chapter 13, verse 2. And the supper being ended, the devil having now put in the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he was come from God and went to God, he rises from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter said unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? And Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter said unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter saith unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus saith to him, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean ever with, and ye are clean, but not all. For he knew who should betray him, therefore said he, You are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet and had taken his garments and was set down again, he said unto them, Know you what I have done to you? You call me Master and Lord, and you say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. Let's stand together and just be dismissed, and the sisters can go downstairs for the foot washing. And and just pray one for another. Remember us as we'll be traveling the Lord willing tomorrow and in the hall and take a few days and, and hunt a little bit and all just you know. But just pray that the Lord take care of us, give us a safe journey and everything that we'll be all right, okay? Father, we love you and we thank you. We ask you now that you would just come and be with each and every one of us and to remind us of these things that we have talked about. And as we go on our way home after we finish with the foot washing, that you will be there to talk to us and that you will show us our ways, our lives, and our things that we need to straighten up and get right and move on with you. Forgive our sins and lead us by thine understanding and keep us in the light of your love. Bless those that are not here, Lord. And as we finish up then and after we're through and we go home, be with everybody on the way home, give a safe journey. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You're dismissed.